Now let's have a look at the work breakdown structure. Well, what is a work breakdown structure? A work breakdown structure is a graphical representation of the scope statement of your project. And that is why it is created in the scope management knowledge area, because it's just another way of viewing the scope. Research proves that almost everyone thinks best in pictures, and that is why diagrams are so popular for presented information. And the purpose of a work breakdown structure is to break the main deliverables of the project down to work packages so that they can actually be delivered. A work breakdown structure is a very useful tool and vitally important in all but very small projects. But whenever I first heard a work breakdown structure, the name confused me because work to me sounded like activities. But one of the most important points, listen to this carefully, about the work breakdown structure is that work means deliverables, not activities. I've argued this point with many project managers in the past. If you're familiar with Prince 2, the work breakdown structure is similar to the product breakdown structure. So when, you, when using a work breakdown structure, always remember you are working with deliverables or products and never with activities. As I said, I've heard many project managers argue about that. They say that the work breakdown structure should have activities as well. But when in doubt, always check against the pinball guide. It doesn't matter what anyone thinks, what anything does, what your particular organization does, what an instructor on a training course says. When it comes to the PMP exam, the PMBOK guide is the law. The PMBOK guide is 100%. So let's see what the PMBOK guide says about work and the scope management knowledge area. It says, work refers to work products or deliverables that are the result of activity and not the activity itself. Okay, I think that's pretty clear. The PMBOK guy has solved it for us. Work always means deliverables. Okay, I've kept you waiting long enough. Let's get into the fun part. Let's start drawing our work breakdown structure. There are many ways to draw a work breakdown structure. You can have mind maps and all sorts of weird stuff, but I will use the by far the most common version, which is a hierarchical form, which is similar to an organizational chart. At the top, we will place the main deliverable on the project, which in our case is a house. Obviously, a house is too complex for people to deliver, and so we need to break the product down. The process of repeatedly breaking down a product into simpler components is called decomposing. An ugly word, but it's something you need to know for the examination. So let's decompose our house into the main sub-deliverables. We have one, the foundation, two, the roof, three, the walls, four, the interior. Remember I promised to teach you some strange new words? Do you know the name for the main sub-deliverables in the work breakdown structure? You need to know this for the exam. If you don't know, they are called the control accounts. The foundation is a control account, the roof is a control account, the walls are a control account, and the interior is a control account as well. Uh, hey Jim, uh, you made a mistake. Uh, you're building the roof before the walls have been built. You'll have to change them around. No, I haven't made a mistake. <laughs> That's your first main lesson. What, that you don't make mistakes? Well, that too, but the next main lesson is that the work breakdown structure is not time ordered. It can't be, because it won't be until we create the schedule that we'll know for sure which order the products will be delivered. But I don't need a schedule to tell me you can't put a roof on if you don't have any walls. Oh, that's only because this is very obvious in this case. And to be honest, when I create a work breakdown structure, I generally organise it in the approximate order they will be delivered. But when you get down to tens or hundreds of work packages on a complex project, you can't tell the order for certain. And you would have to change your work breakdown structure every time you make a tiny change to your schedule. But as I said before, we're focusing on passing the PMP exam and PMBOK is always right. So we have decomposed our products down into major sub-deliverables or control accounts. We ask the question, do we understand how to deliver these products? In each case, the answer is no, we must decompose further. We will examine the foundation first. 
we need prepared land. We need to place steel mesh for reinforcing the concrete into the hole that we've dug. We have the concrete itself. This time I've placed them in the order that they will be done, but they could have been placed in any order because remember, the work breakdown structure is not time ordered. Why does it say land prepared, mesh installed and concrete laid instead of prepare land, install mesh and lay concrete? It's because every item on the work breakdown structure is a deliverable, but prepare land, install mesh and lay concrete are activities. You must always make it very clear in the wording that they are deliverables. Some deliverables are problematic because in English the deliverable and the item are the same word. For example, plumbing could mean all the pipes and taps in the house or it could mean the activity of installing pipes and taps. In this case, you would say something like plumbing completed or plumbing installed, as long as we can understand it is a deliverable and not an activity. When you're creating a work breakdown structure, you must check that every entry on it is a noun. That's the easy way. And we could simply decompose the other control accounts. I've left the last one with a question mark to represent all the others that we'll need later on. Earlier I mentioned work packages and they are basically sub-deliverables that are simple enough to be understood and to be produced. If you look at 1.2, mesh installed, you cut steel mesh to fit inside the excavation, maybe weld a couple of pieces together. So that's simple enough to be understood and be produced. So that is a work package. 1.3, concrete lead. A truck will pour concrete, it just needs to be spread over the mesh with a shovel and smoothed out. Again, clearly that is a work package. A work package does not get decomposed any further. But then we look at 1.1 land prepared. It looks like it probably needs a bit more decomposition, so let's have a look at that. And we come to another new word. A sub-deliverable that needs to be decomposed further is called a planning package. So land prepared is a planning package. Let's decompose it. We have arrived at work packages, so we don't have to do any more on this control account. What about all these numbers? What do they mean? The numbering system has two purposes. Firstly, it helps you find your way around the breakdown structure. If someone mentions work package 4.3.2.1, on our house project, you would immediately know it is part of the interior, it is part of the plumbing, and it is the first work package in the second planning package. So you find it right away. The second purpose is to do with finances. But first I will tell you more strange words. The numbering system used in the work breakdown structure is called, do you know? It's called the code of accounts. If you know something about financial accounting, you may be thinking that it sounds very like chart of accounts in the general ledger. And that is because the work breakdown structure code of accounts is mapped to the chart of accounts in the organization's general ledger. And so if you give a work package reference or planning package reference or control account reference to the accountant, they should be able to provide you with all the financial information about it for example, the amount of budget expended on it. All these things can appear on the exam, but when was the last time you saw this information in a PMP training course? PIMBOK is not prescriptive about the code of accounts. You can use numbers or letters or numbers and letters or anything you want really, as long as it's meaningful to your organization and achieves its main purposes. So there is our work breakdown structure. It still has planning packages to be decomposed and then it will be complete. It's time for another strange term. As you can see from the work breakdown structure, you could actually start building the house before you have decomposed all the planning packages. You could, for example, complete the foundation and build the walls while you're finalizing the other work packages. Starting a project with planning packages still in the work breakdown structure is called rolling wave. But at this stage, you're probably wondering, where are all the activities? 
If you include activities on a work breakdown structure, as some project managers do, the technical term for this is a dog's breakfast. Our first major point today was that the work breakdown structure shows only deliverables or products, and we represent them by nouns. We will now draw a line onto the work breakdown structure to prevent activities from creeping in. And now we leave the project scope management knowledge area and slip quietly into the project schedule management area, which was called the project time management area in the previous versions of PMBOK. And the area we will be working in is define activities. The PMBOK guide tells us that define activities is the process of identifying and documenting the specific actions to be performed to produce the project deliverables. The key benefit of this process is that it decomposes work packages into schedule activities. So that confirms we are in the right place. Our next step is to create another chart below the work breakdown structure and attach to it. This chart is called the activity list. And for every work package in the work breakdown structure, you decompose it down into the activities required to produce it. And there we have the activities required to deliver the foundation excavation. You would similarly decompose all the other work packages. The most important points are you can only decompose work packages, not planning packages or control accounts. The activity list, as the name strongly suggests, must contain only activities and never any deliverables. That means in contrast to the work breakdown structure, which contained only nouns, the activity list contains only verbs. Well, that covers about two thirds of the work breakdown structure. There is more I would love to say, but we really don't have the time. Perhaps now you're beginning to see why it's one of my favorite areas of the PMBOK guide. I hope that you find something of value in this lesson today.